What's going on, fellow A plusers? We are back for the last and final panel of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. 24 hours of DC fandom. Granted, it's only been what, like 12 hours for us. Hasn't been too bad, but still, it's been a busy week, a weekend to say the least, but it's been a fun one, guys. Uh, we are rounding off this final live Facebook uh video for you guys today as we're going to be diving into the batman the last panel that wind up dropping today uh we wind up getting ourselves an exclusive first look they wind up actually dropping a teaser trailer for us today uh along with some fantastic um knowledge from matt reeves himself as he went on and talked a little bit about the movie as well um so we're going to be highlighting some of what matt reeves said we're definitely going to be breaking down the trailer for you guys also uh and we wind up getting some still images from the trailer as well that we'll go ahead uh, and get through for you guys today as well. So um, we wind up getting our trailer. I, I think that's something that we were all anticipating and hoping for, uh, and they did not disappoint, ladies and gentlemen, at all. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and break it down for you guys today. And again, it is I and the rest of the crew coming through uh, to go ahead and wrap up this week for you guys. Um, I do know that there are other TV, uh, other panels that we did not get a chance to get through, uh, but make no mistake they will be either um downloaded or uploaded later on today or tomorrow ladies and gentlemen so um <laughs> the batman love is strong around here so i'm absolutely loving it um but guys the big question we wind up getting ourselves our batman panel did it live up to the hype uh what did you think about the panel overall Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> biggest thing that stuck out to me about the panel, like before we about even me. got to the trailer, is Matt Reeves' uh, enthusiasm of when he was uh, being able to talk about his film and what we could expect. This guy clearly loves Batman and not I can listen just, to him uh, talk all day long. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And not just the Batman from the comic books. I love how he even talks about the Batman that came before his film. He talks about Ben Affleck, Christian Bale, Michael Keaton. And he talks about how, you know, he wants to, you know, take some elements from all of them, but he also wants it to be his own thing. And I love it. Uh, I could listen. Yeah, like Adam said, I could listen to him talk about Batman all day. That was the big thing that stuck out to me with this panel. Which Matt. Is with with me, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, you know, what wh what is the name of the guy who played? I keep wanting to call him Edward. I it, <laughs> Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson <laughs> ruined the panel for me. The right? opening, I'm, like it was literally in like two seconds, like no, a minute. Because he told me there was something special at the end, so the whole time Matt Reeves was talking, I'm like, get to the trailer, get to the trailer, get to the trailer. <laughs> he like, so I couldn't really take in everything Matt Reeves was saying because I was so focused on seeing footage at the end. If he wouldn't have said nothing and been like, and just like gave it off to Matt Reeves, you know, I was and, and let us, I, I'd have been cool. But I'm like, something at the end, something at the end. He just totally ruined it for me. But now nah, listen to uh, Mr. Reeves talk let me know that he was very serious about what was going on with this movie and that this is his baby. Like, mm -hmm. like the, the, the thing that stuck out to most about me is him talking about Pattinson, him talking about this portrayal of the Riddler, him talking about the portrayal of Catwoman, telling us it's going to be different and possibly the best we ever seen. And then the trailer at the end, we getting possibly matching up to all of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he I mean, he he definitely boasted about this movie incredibly. I mean, you could it's it's um, just his enthusiasm, I think, uh, really attaches itself to everybody when he talks about it. I mean, I really loved hearing him go into depth about just the type of struggle that Bruce Wayne is going to find himself in. Why Robert Pattinson sort of fits that mold of an actor, even bringing up some of Robert Pattinson's past work and stuff and seeing him evolve as an actor. I mean, movies that we've we've mentioned on here, Good Times, High Life, uh, The Rover and things like that, really almost kind of preparing him for the, for this really sort of dark role and take on the character. But just hearing Matt Reeves talk about the idea that because him, uh, because of Bruce Wayne not being a superhero in the sort of the traditional sense, because he doesn't have a superpower, just the idea of how his drive and his compulsion um, really kind of pushes him in here. And really the idea of unable to kind of resolve that sort of by himself, right? The idea of having to go into this Batman persona in order to try and fix that trauma in your life that you're kind of undergoing. So I love the fact that he's presenting us with a Bruce Wayne that's pretty much far from perfect and 
and one that we're going to get the opportunity to kind of see grow. Um, hopefully, if we wind up getting ourselves a, a trilogy, because Matt Reeves does confirm for us that this is a year two Batman, uh, very much earlier on in his career. And one of the things that I love is the fact that he also mentions the fact that Bruce Wayne or Batman is actually gr a growing legend that um, the idea of how the public views him, how they're kind of afraid of him. Uh, and I think that's really important considering the fact that this is only his second year. So you really get to see just his fingerprints um, that he winds up leaving behind on Gotham and how everybody responds to him. I mean, my goodness, the, the in-depth that um, Matt Reeves went into this uh, it gets me super pumped to, 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 to see more, honestly. Uh, definitely agree. Uh, you can kind of see it uh, not only in Robert in like the few uh, bits of footage that we see in his performance, but you can also kind of see it in his costume, uh, which looks good. Don't get me wrong, but you can definitely tell it could use a few final touch uh, touches as well that this is going to be a Batman who is. You know, while there's no origin story, he's definitely a Batman that is still growing uh, over time. And I love that. Not only was that emphasized by Matt Reeves before we even saw the trailer, we can totally see that within the trailer itself. I'm going to be honest. The best thing about how that trailer was cut is that everybody spoke but Bruce Wayne. And then the first time you hear Robert Pattinson speak is in character in the costume. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, the, the silence of Bruce Wayne speaks just thousands of it, it just speaks so huge when it comes to that almost anger and torment. You know what I'm saying? Coming out the end. It, it's the build up from that because I'm watching like, man, uh, is he going to say something? Am, am I going to get, you know, like you're sitting there like, how does he feel? He's looking at this stuff. Everybody's asking him questions. You know, yeah. it feels like through the whole thing, but he doesn't he doesn't feel comfortable enough to speak until he's in action as the character. So that's, that, that's what I got from it. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a good point. I didn't even realize that. But yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely plays a pivotal role into who the character is. And I think just the mindset. And I think that kind of plays into it, right? Like you said, the idea of everybody asking him these questions, he's not saying anything. Maybe he doesn't even know the answers because of the fact that he's so young and so new into all this and really struggling with a lot. So I'm glad that you wind up bringing that up. And it, it definitely feels like just from the trailer, like a, a very layered story, the idea that there's so much depth that's going to kind of go into this film, whether be the characters the action pieces the drama how it all kind of connects i mean you know he does make reference that some of his inspirations behind this sort of detective psychological thriller that he's putting out uh, a film like uh, chinatown which he said was an inspiration french connection taxi driver all of them being very much like noir and i think he even referenced it as like gritty 70s street stories in a sense um and i i, I think that sounds absolutely wonderful to be quite honest with you so i uh, and you can just see watching the trailer, those inspirations certainly do go ahead and shine through. And, and I just think um, Michael G Michael Giacchino's score, the way that this trailer was cut, um, again, I think it definitely goes with the pace and the tone that we wind up seeing very early on from just that tease uh, of the, the score and the brief Robert Pattinson in his Batman costume. What we saw a couple months back or whenever it came out continues here in this in this trailer uh and it feels very cohesive to me so i, I really enjoyed it mm. what about that ultra combo that he put on the dude at the end of the trailer like, it was like a 10 hit combo yeah like, yeah, <laughs> yeah that, it, just hearing the stuff crack and then him speaking afterwards and and the funny like the 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 villains the minions i'm gonna call them minions because that's what they are the minions seeming concerned but <laughs> you but you still don't see that full fear because they're looking like this is only one man oh, so like, wow. like like you saying that building legend you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be built on the backs of these dummies in the these guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For real, man. For real. I mean, one guy, the one guy actually did look like he, he was either crying or he just had rain in his eyes. The homeboy looked like he was tearing up. I'd be frightened too. I'd probably crap my pants. He's probably yeah. the first day on the job, the new guy. <laughs> the initiate, the initiate, right? The in, initiation, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Initiate. I think uh, part of that is, yeah, because like you mentioned, uh, there was definitely the look of like shock from them, but not necessarily quite to the point of fear. Like, I feel like they still feel like, OK, we might still be able to take this guy on. But it's like that a moment of shock is I feel like they looked at him, a guy in a back costume, and they thought, 
look at this poser, you know, just, you know, dressing up like a bat, you know, what can he possibly do? So that initial thing when he, you know, grabbed the guy and just like, you know, kept pounding on him over and over. That's when they, that was like their moment of realization of, Oh, okay. This isn't some goofball in a Halloween costume. This guy's actually, uh, this guy's actually crazy. <laughs> like it, then, it, 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 it was really cool because that, that to me, like you said, year two, he has to build that fear up to mm -hmm. when they see him. Oh, we got to run or we got to shoot this dude. You know what I'm saying? That's not there yet. So, so seeing the legend actually come to, you know what I'm saying? Just like in the Batman year one comics and stuff like that, you, you, you got to build it. You know what I'm saying? LeBron can't be the goat mm -hmm. and, and not have, you know what I'm saying? A couple of championships, you know what I'm saying? Michael Jordan wasn't Michael Jordan until he started doing the things that he did, you know? So it's going to be very interesting to see the way they take the, 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 the leads, the leeways they take in this movie to build the the endscape of what's going to be this character by by films in, but that's one thing I want to state, and I know I can't wait until Harry Stewart talk about this show. Even though I feel that was the Riddler talking to us most of the time in there, I can guarantee you did not see that character in the teaser. Mm, I see mm. what you're saying. So you don't think that's Paul Dano with the mask on and doing the whole tape thing, huh? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, 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 I think stewards i think stewards like dead I mean, on on who that is i mean yeah you I, I mean you might be right i mean the fact that he does mention paul dano's riddler is a brand new version something that we've never quite seen before um i don't necessarily know if he'll be prancing around in like his green jacket and cane from like batman forever or anything like that so i don't know i i don't know if that's his version or not who do you think that is though um i was thinking if there's a good chance that could be a hush that we saw in the trailer working mm. for the Riddler or, or uh, working with the Riddler. Oh, what makes you think that though? Uh, not just the look, but the fact that he's really, it looks like this whole movie is really just him going after uh, Batman as a whole, not even necessarily having a, a goal in mind of like, you know, trying to build up a criminal empire or anything like that. It looks like this whole thing is just him trying to like hurt Bruce Wayne as a person. And I'm wondering if he's trying to do it in a more subtle way. Like first he's going to hurt Batman to really break him down. And then when, you know, he feels like he's really broken Batman as a person to the point where Bruce Wayne almost wants to give up being Batman. That's when he goes after Bruce Wayne as a, as a person and tries to hurt the people around Bruce Wayne. Um, you know, and it's like that on top of the fact that uh, Matt Reeves was saying that there's supposed to be a huge detective element to this whole movie. Uh, I think the idea of the hush being like the secret surprise villain that we're going to be getting at the end uh, would make a lot of sense. And just to kind of build off of that, I mean, he did even mention the idea that um, the story is really going to sort of interlace a lot of these villains together. So even though we have people like uh, uh, Zoe, who's playing Catwoman or uh, um uh, you know, the penguin in there and things like that, even the Riddler. I mean, you might be you might be right. It could be a, a a detective story here where Batman winds up assuming that maybe it's all these people or like each individual one. And he goes on this path and quickly winds up realizing that, no, it's 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 actually none of these particular villains, uh, even though, you know, I, I guess that's part of the detective work. Right. To kind of put mm -hmm. different villains in there as a process sort of, of of elimination. So, yeah, I mean, none of these villains that have been named may be the main villain of this uh, because even like you said Matt Reeves himself did mention the idea that they're going to be kind of interlacing these characters and woven into kind of this detective story uh, and murder mystery that we're going to get so uh, you might be onto something there Stuart you really might be um, and, uh, oh sorry w one last thing I want to uh, address with that is uh, the idea that it sounds like kind of the theme that Matt Reeves might be going with is the idea that Bruce Wayne's real biggest enemy is going to be his own failures I mean, yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that just based off of just the torment and stuff that I'm I'm sure he's going through. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure he's probably hard on himself for sure. Um, so Batman is going to be taking place in year two. I, what Matt Reeves did talk about also that I found really interesting is that he actually talked a little bit about Gotham PD. Um, this is um, the Gotham PD that we're talking about um, was revealed in a couple of weeks back um, in one of the news articles that uh, the Gotham PD was going to be sort of a spinoff from the Batman series itself. Um, and we, I wasn't quite sure exactly the time period in which that was going to be placed, but they are referencing that the Gotham PD television series that's going to be debuting on HBO Max is going to be part of year one 
for uh, our Batman story here. So we'll look at it as sort of like a prequel uh, a whole entire year prior to this particular film taking place. Uh, I think they even referenced the idea of seeing a corrupt PD, uh, the inner workings um, behind the scenes of just corruption and mob uh, for the city, uh, and even uh, probably even references of Batman, because I think that's where you'll start seeing the public and the police department realizing that there's a vigilante uh, going out there and kind of doing this stuff. So again, to kind of help build up that legend uh, of Robert Pattinson's Batman that we wind up meeting here in year two. And for me, I, I, I love the intricacies of it. I love the fact that they're not afraid to branch off a little bit and spin off and do something different. And again, adding to that whole multiverse, I guess, if you will, um, uh, that they've kind of built up as well. Are you guys excited for the Gotham PD series? Yes. Yeah. Very much so, man. Like, <laughs> look, I, I hated the Gotham TV show. I'm be totally honest. Like, I, I couldn't get into that. Like, after the first half of the season, it was just weird. Um, people say it's because I'm an Arrowverse fan. I just didn't like that. I just didn't like the writing on the show at all. Until until they got the dude from Shameless. Like, I watched that with him playing, you know what I'm saying, that role of what was supposed to be the Joker after that, just because he's a great actor. But this Gotham PD series taking place before uh, the Batman ma makes me wonder what was happening with the city that that Bruce had to step up and do this anyway. It, it's a different looking for vengeance coming after your parents killer. But but what made you want to protect, you know, what I'm saying an entire city. And, and why was the Gotham PD failing to start off with? Th this is going to be interesting trying to see if uh, who's corrupt. You know what I'm saying? Who's not actually getting into the nitty gritty of what's going on? I believe that this is going to be what Gotham should have been. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right there, and I think um, I'm hoping in this in this movie we get to see um, that very reason from Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne, kind of hopefully explaining that to us also. Um, I wanted to go ahead and um, showcase some of the photo stills from the trailer, so we can go ahead and break them down a little bit and uh, just kind of talk uh, amongst ourselves about it. First and foremost, I love the fact that uh, Jeffrey Wright is in this movie, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the fact that Matt Reeves even gave Jeffrey Wright some love in here for being able to have him on this cast as Gordon. Gordon. And remember, James Gordon, uh, he's not commissioner as of yet. I think they even showcased that in the trailer. They had somebody else sort of at the podium talking while um, Gordon was in the back. So he's not quite commissioner Gordon, definitely still in his detective mode. Um, are you guys excited to see what Jeffrey Wright's going to bring to this role? Hell yes. What's Okay, so what was really awesome, uh, looking at him as Commissioner Gordon, despite him being a different ethnicity, you look at him and you're like, that is definitely Commissioner Gordon. And oh, yeah. uh, he's an amazing actor overall. Like I, um, If I'm being honest, I've only seen one season, the first season of Westworld. I haven't really gotten that far into season two yet, but he was so amazing in that. He was really good in the, in the Hunger Games. Uh, so here, when I first heard he was going to be playing Commissioner Gordon, I thought he was like one of the most perfect choices you could go with uh i am hella excited to see what he does as uh gordon yeah man he's uh he's heaven sent in regards to his acting i'm i'm looking forward to it man i'm gonna be totally honest he's one of those actors where it doesn't matter what he's in or what role he's playing if you see him cast in something that's the one thing you're going to be comfortable with so oh. i have no no negative no positive things to say it's that hey that's homie so uh -huh. I, know, I know at least the role he's playing is going to be all right. Let's see what's going on with the rest of this movie. I don't know about any role. Like if they announced him as Harley Quinn, I'd be a little. Uh, <laughs> That'd be the most convincing Harley Quinn <laughs> I ever <laughs> see, bro. <laughs> you probably would never want anybody else to play Harley Quinn ever. Afterwards. <laughs> probably, probably. I'd be like Mar Margot Rock. Who's that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who that? Who that? Um, probably, uh, he'll probably met that act too. Like, like on some, on go get a sex chain, all that stuff. Come back and be like, damn, I'm Harley. <laughs> 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 um, all right. Next, uh, next shot I do want to uh, showcase is uh, the was that? Oh, that's the Bat Cave, or at least it looks like definitely the Bat Cave. Um, it almost reminds me of like an old train station or something like that, uh, just because of the staircase and whatnot. But I'm assuming maybe that's under his mansion. I have no idea. I mean, Matt Reeves has talked about that it's going to be a rather unique Bat Cave. I feel like everything that he mentioned was uh, unique in in its own sense. That's going to be very different than anything that we've kind of seen before. But that definitely does look like it's a uh, at least a, a lab or a part of his uh, back cave. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, beautiful. Uh, oh, wow. that, that looks like a military bunker. That that looks like where it's they can do the suicide squad at now. 
<laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I like the look, the openness. Um, yeah, I hated, I, I hated the back cave that had the river in it. Uh that you had to go through the water to get to like uh, mm. some some of them are too intricate in what's going on um watching batwoman i love the bat cave in there you know what i'm saying small place efficient has what you need where you know what i'm saying where it goes the only thing that throws me off of this is that man that staircase looked like it was photoshopped in there horribly like it doesn't look like it's supposed to be there i think that's just the quality of the picture man don't worry yeah, <laughs> but, I, I, I go back so. and look at the trailer um yeah. Also, uh, this is also a back shot of the uh, Batmobile. We didn't get two. I mean, we did get some, like two or three shots of the Batmobile. Um, not really driving so much, but just kind of getting ready and revving up. But I thought that shot was uh, was pretty beautiful. Um, somebody else that's rather beautiful, Zoe somebody Kravitz herself. Quantum Realm in that Batmobile. Um, Zoe Kravitz pops up in this movie also in a very unique um uh, Catwoman costume, very much fitting that role of the uh, the cat burglar, I guess you will. Um, I really kind of dug the design. If you look at her her uh, her burglar mask, in a sense, she does kind of have like the cat ears uh, that are kind of protruding just a little bit, also. But yeah, definitely, very definitely pinpoint to cat burglar, if you will. It, it kind of reminds me of. Uh, how with the very first X-Men movie, uh, Kevin Feige wanted to, you know, go with the Wolverine mask, but like the producers of the movie didn't want that. So they kind of uh, adjusted it by doing it with uh, Hugh Jackman's hair and having his hair kind of, uh, you know, be re resemble the, the uh, shape of his uh, usual mask from the comic books. And that's what it seems like they're doing here is they're taking like a regular like ski mask, but they're just kind of like, like kind of making it look like the cat ears are completely accidental, even though it's like clear clearly there on purpose to you know add to the cat motif i got two things to say about this one who is she protecting her identity from absolutely nobody that's a that hole is way too big cut out of there <laughs> <laughs> i could tell exactly who she is Are like you know, yeah the, it looks like she's protecting us like halfway she like the people that are in the uh like in walmart who don't want to wear their covet mask so they're just covering their nose <laughs> But um, it, it, that looks like a Power Ranger helmet, and and they just didn't put the visor in it. That that that's what that looks like. To me. <laughs> but no, nah, I'm looking for I'm looking forward to it. But you see that leather jacket, the leather pants, and how open that mask is. Wait until October this year, and see how many women you got walking around as uh, Selena Kyle. Mm -hmm. A ton, man. A ton. A ton. Um, next group of photos here. Um, let's get into some uh, Pattinson photos here. Uh, these were part of the um, actual official photos that were released earlier today uh, from Warner Brothers. So we actually get um, new images here. This is Bruce Wayne. Uh, I think I think this is from the trailer that we wind up seeing. This is right after the car winds up like barraging through a group of people or some chairs or something that one of the guys comes out and realizes that he's got the um the letter to the batman taped on his chest and this is where uh bruce wayne notices it uh and then of course we get to see him brooding uh just only like robert pattinson can certainly do um definitely get into that dark state of this particular film um i think it's uh, who said this uh lion uh in here says i like that they have the uh the black makeup um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of digging the black makeup around the eyes again, honestly. Uh, what do you guys think about that look underneath his cowl? If you're going to do a brooding movie with a hero, what was the best brooding movie ever with a hero? The Crow. Mm. With the makeup, it just, the, the black eye makeup just makes, you know what I'm saying, so much. Not only does it take the reflection, it make, makes light not come on your face, but it just gives you that look of, tired you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah. like, like you had enough you know like when people look like they they've been through it all they start to get them circles around their eyes you know what i'm saying and and that's that's what it looks like but he's smart he's also trying to protect his identity and not cut a big hole in his mask where everybody can see <laughs> Uh, and then we got. Uh, uh, oh wait, wait! I, I want to say one quick thing about uh, about that shot as yeah, well. Okay. Is uh, I do like how it totally looks like he has helmet hair after you know taking the mask off. Where 
you know, even though I love all the CW shows, but so many times you'll see them like after they had just gotten done, like in an epic battle, they'll take their helmet off and their hair looks like they were just in makeup right before showing up on set. I love that you don't have that here. Here it looks like he legit just got done, you know, with a really big battle and his hair is basically helmet hair. Yeah. Yeah, I think you guys are spot on for sure. And then let's get, let's get some um, photos in here of the Batman himself. Some really cool shots. This was from the beginning of the trailer here, which actually surprised me. Um, considering the fact that this is only year two of Batman, I am intrigued by the idea that he's already sort of included uh, in regards to like the detective aspects of just working with Gotham PD, right? I like. I'm always been used to the idea of maybe clearly him and Gordon working together, but always kind of in secret or sort of like off to the side. The fact that we actually see Batman at the crime scene with the rest of the police officers, you know, detective Gordon and things like that. It did surprise me to say the least, but I'm assuming maybe when the, 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 the villains are coming after you and asking for you specifically, probably makes sense that you got to be there at the crime scene also but uh i thought this was a cool shot and a cool little way to introduce him because when they do introduce him for this scene you only see his boots kind of walking into the room at first and then they reveal that it's it's actually him in the room what did you guys think of that scene i think that was played good because when they started talking and with seeing the uh like shots of a henchman or a villain you might have thought with the riddler speaking you thought you might have finna catch a glance at him but when, when it pans up and you see the Batman, it was just good cinematography for, for a teaser trailer because you they try to lead you to think it's somebody else and you pop up as him. You're like, wow, this early in the trailer? But like I said, I think the buildup was for that last line through everything because even here he doesn't speak. He's just menacingly looking. And I don't care what anybody says. That cow, that suit looks amazing. And you see that suit? That's why this man didn't have to work out. <laughs> Uh, and then we wind up getting uh, this is another shot a little darker but this is um, the confrontation between him and Selena Kyle from the trailer uh, we did get to see a brief little action scene between those two uh, and this is him confronting her there uh, and then one of my cool shots out of this a trailer also kind of almost reminded me a little bit of Batman Begins um, the idea of him repelling up the um, the the circular staircase. Uh, I thought that was a really cool shot as the rest of the, the police department shoot after him. I thought that was a cool, uh, I thought that was a cool shot. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this, I do wanna ask you guys a question. You know, when we're watching the trailer and he beats up the thug and everybody's like, who who are you? Did, every, did anybody else go, I'm Batman? When he, <laughs> I got, like immediately it came out of my mouth. But then when I heard Robert Pattinson's choice of, I'm vengeance. I thought it was, I thought it was perfect. I thought it was perfect. No, it was the perfect way of showing that. Yes, this is a Batman movie, but we are, and we're giving you what you would normally expect from a Batman movie, but not the way you expect it. You know, we've heard Batman many times in the comics and in the show say, I am vengeance. I am night. I am Batman. But in, when it comes to the movies, so many times you're just expecting him to say I'm Batman. So I thought him saying, you know, really subverting our expectations. And instead of going with the whole I'm Batman that we've heard so many times, I am vengeance was the perfect uh, line that they could use for that scene. Look, homie, I'm just glad you didn't get a I am bat like a weird voice. Yeah, I'm, I'm 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 glad he really acted and put himself, oh, yeah. you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, into what's going on, which makes me wonder what he's going to sound like as Bruce. It's just going to be something where he's a little more timid and calm. And and I would I, and is this Batman going to have anger issues? You know, what I'm saying thinking about things that he went through his life because, yo, it, it was that no reason probably has was, his issues all across yeah it. yeah punching that dude 10 times in the face after breaking he was done when you broke his arm like it put <laughs> him on the ground to <laughs> punch him that many in in the sound effects because when i watched that i had headphones on like hearing the sound effects mm -hmm. rattle around in the head i'm like the it sounds good it looks good the 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 music hit me i'm like yo i'm there thank you i don't even want to thank dc thank you matt reeves mm -hmm. for 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 doing this because the, the, the thing about what's going on with everything that we saw and we liked today, right? The, the one key component is DC and WB kept their hands out of stuff. 
I almost cussed, kept their hands out of stuff and let the directors and writers do what they do. And then this is what happens. This slate of DC movies has me is are honestly you, are you more excited for this slate or phase four of Marvel? I'm more excited for this slate. It's only the only thing in phase four of Marvel that I'm looking forward to are the the Disney Plus shows and um Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange. That that's it. And everything else, I'm like, I watch it because I'm trained to watch it. No, I'm ready. Look, I, I'm I'm feared. I'm scared of COVID. I'm scared of COVID. If you told me the Batman was out tomorrow and there's going to be people with pot that tested positive for COVID in the movie theaters, I would be there with a mask going to watch Batman sharing my popcorn with them. That, that's how serious this is for me right now. <laughs> no, I'd, go, I'd go watch it even if the theater didn't allow masks. I... I... <laughs> Yeah, I, I I will say I um I did I did love the the line selection. I'm vengeance for sure. I also love the delivery of it because it, it feels like that's definitely Robert Pattinson's voice. I mean, it's mm -hmm. yes, it's it's his voice, but he definitely has add that grit and that grovel to it, right? Like there is there is an aspect of a Christian Bale, you know, just that that grittiness there. But it's one, it's cohesive. You can absolutely hear what he's saying, but it, it doesn't come across as strong. So I I, I love just the 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 subtle sort of change in his voice there uh with the grittiness um but yeah we haven't seen anything from him as bruce wayne yet uh, i would assume probably once we start getting into official trailers maybe even the second official trailer and we start getting more of the meat of the story uh, we'll probably find out exactly a little bit more about robert pattinson as bruce wayne um but yeah, man, I, I I think this is incredible what Matt Reeves has wound up putting together so far. And this is just a teaser trailer. And you know, one thing that I'll say is like if Matt Reeves can honestly make me feel some type of way for uh, a gorilla uh, in Planet of the Apes, you know, some monkey and stuff and really dive deep into the ideologies of like uh, Caesar and stuff and just all the stuff that he's gone through uh, in his years. If you wind up watching the trilogy, if he could do that for me. I'm pretty sure he's going to convince me just just put together an amazing Batman movie that's really going to focus on um, just this character. It, it feels like first and foremost, which I'm so thankful for. Caesar is Batman and, and Gotham is his family. I mean, I guess I can I can I can, I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. Yeah, I can kind of see that for sure. I um, like that. Break. The, the one thing I will say that kind of worried me when uh, listening to the whole panel is uh, him bringing up that Gotham, uh, which this first part of it didn't bother me at all, is him mentioning that it's going to be a very different looking Gotham, which that part kind of excited me. It's going to feel like a real city, but not one that you've ever been to. The part that kind of worried me is that it does sound like in doing so, a good chunk of Gotham is going to be done with uh, computer effects rather than using like actual exteriors, uh, exteriors of a real city. Uh, the only no, reason he, he like he's, it's not like he said he was used, like, was it London uh, or Liverpool? I believe he said is the, uh, from what I, from what I remember him saying was that Liverpool was going to be the basis of it. And then as he builds around the city for like the, I'm, I'm assuming maybe some of the deeper exterior shots will probably be CGI, but I, I they definitely are filming on location or at least were. So I have okay. a feeling, I have a feeling like probably some of the, what they do with like, um, they'll probably use Chicago and then they'll probably, I'm pretty sure they probably added extra buildings or whatever the case may be. But I think that's where I'm getting from is that they, they definitely filmed in Liverpool, but the further exterior shots, they'll probably will CGI most of the rest of the city. So I, I, I do think it'll feel like completely different. Cause that I'd be okay with. Uh, the, the thing that I just, don't want to see like and i think it's done way too many times with movies is i just don't want to see a superhero movie that's done entirely on a green screen uh mm -hmm. so i'm hoping we get more like actual uh shots uh that are filmed on location in the cities i'm hoping mean, so i don't think we're saying with covid they we're gonna maybe have to start doing some stuff on set but so yeah, that that might be a worry, but I'm not quite sure. Stuart. He means he doesn't want a Green Lantern movie. He doesn't want a Hulk movie. He does. It's, it's a lot of movies. Don't want a Nova movie. It's a lot of movies you eliminating, bro. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I'm not saying that I hate any movie that does it. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just Studio saying that now. it's just something that's been overused for so long. And I really want to see like more high budget movies kind of step out of that and go back to doing it how they used to do it. You know, yeah. I don't think you need to film everything in front of a green screen. I think that there's plenty of things that can be done on location and they look a lot better. 
you want John Wick. <laughs> there you go. I want, I want a John Wick Batman. Yeah, I want <laughs> some traveling. Hey, that, 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 that would honestly travel. work, though. That would work. Uh, uh, John Wick Batman? John Wick <laughs> is Batman. What are you talking about? <laughs> Batman was done, definitely. Yeah. Um, this comes from Ryan. He says, uh, you have all been busy men today. Thanks for the insights. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. Uh, we appreciate that love. Uh, yeah, we, Hey, listen, there's a ton, ton of stuff. You know, our job is to keep you guys informed uh, as, as best as we can. So um, we just figured there's going to be so much DC content today. Um, even though we do have an A plus hero report that we're going to be talking about, we do have other stories that have happened throughout the week. Um, but we really wanted to go ahead and at least allow uh, for majority of this day to be focused on DC fandom and really to kind of keep you guys up to date and all the news and all the juicy details and stuff. And trust me, if you go over to our Facebook page, it's plastered with stuff from today, guys. So all the stuff that you you've missed you've definitely have found your, your home for it guys so definitely don't worry about that but thank you ron we uh we appreciate it i'm, I'm gonna um, be honest I, 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 i'm supposed to stream uh the avengers beta tonight on the a plus twitch might change that to tomorrow morning <laughs> like I, I don't even think i could do it <laughs> uh, oh yeah man um alec also goes on to say everyone would know it's her oh talking about your uh exactly your Thing, saying it, it was the 1995's movie mask for PR is what he was <laughs> the, the uh, ski mask. Yeah, it, it, it looked but like a cat. The, the okay. same to the, the cutout was perfect, man. I'm like, yeah. I mean, that, I, I kind of figure Selena Kyle in this movie is probably like a nobody, and it's not like uh, Gotham PD can afford facial recognition technology. So I, I kind of think that that's what she's going with, is that like no one's going to recognize her because no one's going to be looking for her. Or, or maybe she's so good nobody ever sees her. So what's that the too. point? Her, <laughs> then what's the point of you wearing half a mask anyway? <laughs> that's, uh, that's why. <laughs> Uh, yeah, UT, uh, UT Lions says 2021 is DC's year. Um, it, I think it's just going to be a big year for just comic mm -hmm. book movies in general, man. As much as many things are being pushed uh, to 2021, it's going to be a, a slammed and crowded year for sure. But they've got some great, a great lineup. When it comes to that, their lineup is, uh, which we know previous to the movies they're supposed to have, is just that that they're finally putting their foot forward because Marvel before the pandemic had already showed us what they were doing in the lineup. We have heard of what DC was going to do, but remember a lot of stuff they couldn't even put together. They mm -hmm. were going through directors that they finally showed us what they're going to do. I mean, that, that looks really good, but when, but to make it their year, I don't, I don't know, man, you still got Marvel still got a hell of a slate that, that they're putting together. I just feel like they're, uh, they're actually doing movies right with uh, DC right now, starting with the uh, Snyder Cut. Um, I, I, ju I just don't know. I don't know if they can win. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna be close, but man, with the what's it called? Not the Inhumans, but the um, Internals. The the Internals, Shang Chi, uh, Black Widow. You know what I'm saying? Like they have a slate. It's just that we haven't heard anything since like march nothing the, the yeah, i think once the build-up starts for those phases and those movies yeah we might so we might certainly feel different um at, at the end but but yeah you make a good point when yeah. they announce when they announce another phase that, that that's that's what i see them doing now oh th they're doing this that they, they mm -hmm. like disney just watched this it's like all right let's announce the next phase and and then we'll forget about everything DC <laughs> WB just did. I'm definitely not. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll forget. if they, if they tell us Blades coming next phase and, and they hit us with some stuff that we're sitting here waiting on, yeah, we'll be like, mm. yeah, if they tell if they tell me Agents of Sword Agents of Sword is coming to Disney Plus, it doesn't matter what DC did today. <laughs> <laughs> I know Andy. Andy's got that Men in Black memory. He just he, he, just, he just he just forgets about anything he just saw yesterday. Like, <laughs> it's like, Ooh, new I have, like the sunglasses somewhere around. Just like put the sunglasses up. Just you know, you have the neuralizer, except for it has like the the Mickey Mouse ears on top of it. <laughs> I like it. I like it. 
Uh, but I, I, I think one uh, thing Dis- uh, or DC has going for it is that um, there's no longer anything huge that we know of. Like, obviously, this could change uh, the next Marvel movie that comes out. But there's no huge thing that uh, Marvel is currently building up to uh, as of now. So, like, whereas before the DC movies had to all, like, face the fact that, like, all their movies were competing against other films that were building up to Infinity War and then Endgame. They don't have that uh, pressure to deal with anymore. Nowadays, people are going to be going to the Marvel movies to watch them as standalone films until they announce like what the big uh, buildup is going to be next time. No, we were already we already asking about what the buildup is. We're, we're already <laughs> waiting for the younger villain. Like they they done messed What's up. The next big villain. Well, you know, I I think oh, look, it's I think it's just one of those things. That, you know, for me, I think Marvel kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit by you know, I, I and I don't necessarily know if they knew this was going to happen or if this is i'm sure it's part of their bigger plan but for COVID 19 to hit in a year where marvel has like completely cleaned out their slate um i definitely doesn't help them at all whereas you've got dc who seemingly has been working on so much stuff maybe prior to COVID, that now everything's ready for them to go ahead and actually showcase, right? And Marvel hasn't had the chance to do anything. They probably had a bunch of television shows that they probably could have been doing, right? Runaways Season 4, Cloak and Dagger Season 3. They they would have had a huge lineup and slate of stuff, but they decided, you know what? We want to make sure all of our stuff is connected as far as Marvel goes, so let's just cancel out all of our other stuff, start reworking from the ground up. Now COVID-19 is Hit and they're like, shit, we can't do anything. And so <laughs> DC has taken that momentum now and has really bolstered their stuff by actually showing us that, hey, these aren't just concepts anymore. This stuff that we've been talking about is now being developed and we seemingly feel like we, we've got our foot on the pedal and now a better mindset and plan to go ahead and attack it. And I just feel like DC is just really carrying, just riding this wave of momentum here because I think fans are coming around and realizing like man maybe they're actually getting their shit together now you know what i mean so i think things just bad timing for marvel they they put together an amazing amazing panel but i i could tell you right now i still don't believe the flash is coming out until it comes out <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's fair enough. you're absolutely right you're absolutely right uh, su- suicide squad benefit, that's right 110 percent from james gunn so as soon as we see the suicide squad movie and we love it which i'm pretty sure we do what are we going to do when is Guardians 3 coming out? Like, we're going straight, we're hopping straight back on the Marvel train for Guardians. People are already uh, asking about Guardians 3. He's like, bro, I haven't even done a press tour yet. Wait a minute. <laughs> right. Uh, a Wonder Woman, is, Wonder Woman, I think, I'm hoping it comes out when she says it's going to come out because I don't think they can benefit from waiting too much longer to put that out anyway. Because even though that was an incredible trailer and stuff they show, some of the luster has fell off of one, you know what I'm saying, off of Wonder Woman and some of the hype that we had before. But this batman movie i don't care it can come out next october you know what i'm saying i'm i'm there i'm i'm I, yeah, yeah I'm, I think it I'm, is. I'm i'm totally i'm totally marked for that but all disney and marvel had to do is say okay x-men you know what i'm saying phase five <laughs> fantastic Bitch, four yeah. phase oh, five and <laughs> I can just see it already. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, and 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 it's done with. And you're like, oh yeah. No. I, I really Listen, forgot what they got what, in the uh, tuck. What Kevin Feige's like just thinking of right now is uh, all the Disney executives are probably messaging him, going, "Oh, Kevin, what are we gonna do about this?" And then tomorrow morning, Kevin's just gonna put a tweet out that's just gonna say hashtag Fantastic Four, and then suddenly all of those fans who have been so excited for DC are gonna be like, "Oh my gosh, Marvel's better again." <laughs> so he can do something less than that. Just hashtag your Netflix shows are back, new seasons coming next year hashtag <laughs> punishers and spider-man like he could do what they got they got too many toys they could play with right now mm-hmm. that, that they're yeah. getting back and too many things they could do but the funny thing is is that this is the first time in a long time we talked about dc actually forcing marvel to do something rather than marvel forcing dc to do something mm-hmm so, yeah because it's now it's very go. much a case of all right marvel you've seen we we've you've seen our stuff now, what do, what do you got? And granted, listen, I, I know it's not necessarily a competition. I know that they all want 
everybody's movies to certainly thrive. If DC's movies are successful, that just only benefits Marvel. If Marvel's movies are successful, that only benefits DC also. So um, regardless, guys, regardless, I do think that uh, big things will be happening for both companies. But hot damn, DC, uh, you definitely did it today, man, with uh, some amazing cool. stuff. So shout out to the Warner Brothers and DC for putting together a great fandom. I just realized why they held my boy off to the side on that panel and they didn't give him too many questions. Who, Pedro? Yeah, because I can guarantee you there was some question in there about the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> Probably more, more Star Wars questions than Maxwell, Maxwell Lord. Like, we don't got any questions for you. Sorry, man. Yeah, so so like that, that that's what's interesting to me because when he finishes this up, he's going right back to Disney to do something else. I love <laughs> these people that are collecting two checks. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, guys. Um, but uh, overall, to get back into the DC talk, um, overall, what were your thoughts about this panel, uh, the trailer, and are you hyped? I am fully hyped, uh, not just for the movie, but seeing what it, uh, how they expand on it in uh, Gotham PD, and also just kind of like I'm excited to see where it goes as a franchise, assuming that they do a full on trilogy with this. I'm keeping my fingers crossed because I want to see that growth. Mm -hmm. um the only thing i was disappointed about is that i was looking forward to the tv you know what i'm saying panels and announcements the fact that that got pushed back um they couldn't push back the flash so i understand that because that's too big of a thing for them to push back but man i wanted to see some legends news i want you know what i'm saying i wanted to see uh some superman and lois news i that, look if if dc wants to win all they have to do is when this what is september 16th you said it was or like the 12th or whatever yeah the 12th uh, is when that drops off all they need to do is just show me a trailer for green and the canaries and you got me for life <laughs> nice mm. nice um yeah so uh I, you know for me i'm actually kind of glad that they moved the tv panels uh based off of all the damn work that we had to do today as far as coverage goes i feel like this was a plethora of information that wind up dropping today so i get the idea of them wanting to kind of split it up um to not overload people because uh, not that this was an overload but this is like this is like peak information for sure so uh, i thought they did a, a really marvelous job the trailer looks fantastic i'm gonna be there opening day for sure uh I, i've been a big supporter of robert pattinson i think matt reeves knows how to get into the psyche of a ton of characters and i also you know i also love the fact that he talks about the idea that that's really what he's built around is the fact that he's used to making movies about um, a person's psyche and getting into their thoughts. And then the idea of him realizing that he can take that same concept and move it over to a genre film like com like a comic book character and utilize what he does best for some of our great and legendary heroes that are certainly out there. So I'm really glad that they have somebody that's as smart, as intelligent, that knows what he's doing as a filmmaker with Matt Reeves, really being able to tackle a character like Batman that uh, really deals and struggles with a lot of uh, internal stuff. So uh, I think this is a, a perfect fit for this character. And I cannot wait, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, guys, let us know your thoughts. Um, what did you guys think about this particular panel? Uh, what did you guys go ahead and think about just the trailer in general? Uh, we definitely want to go ahead and hear your thoughts. So let us know in the comment section box below. Um, outside of that, we do have um, your Aquaman panels already up, right, Stuart? Uh, that is correct. So that's that's up. Uh, Shazam will most likely be up tomorrow. Uh, we've got the Flash uh, and Black Adam. Are you doing those tomorrow too, Indy? Uh, Fla Flash will be up. I'm gonna put Flash up tomorrow morning, and then I put Black Adam up after uh, Hero Report. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then, of course, yes, guys, we definitely. And, oh, and there is a Titans panel as well. So uh, I'll go ahead and probably do the Titans panel for you guys tomorrow also. So uh, again, you'll still get DC fandom information all weekend long uh, but feel free to join us uh hero report uh will in fact be going live sunday at noon as we do tackle other marvel dc television and movie news from throughout the week so uh until tomorrow ladies and gentlemen we'll certainly see you then um so if anything do us oh yes cindy um i just wanted to do something right quick that we normally don't do but since we're live uh could we please give a round of applause to kevin and, and the yeah. way he was attacking the Facebook page, you know what I'm saying? Uh, big ups to him for keeping that going. Uh, he even did some dangerous stuff he wasn't supposed to be doing to get some of that stuff up there. <laughs> so just to let him know you're, you're, you're a very important part of the team and we appreciate you doing that because we were swamped. 
Yeah, <laughs> most definitely, Kevin. So thank you very much for coming through as always, man. We appreciate that. Um, but uh, until then, ladies and gentlemen, follow us here at A Plus Opinions, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. And until tomorrow, we'll see you guys later. Keep it A Plus. Bye.